Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to look at the Astronomers Without Borders Folding One Sky 130 millimeter Telescope. It's a wonderful telescope. It's actually manufactured by Celestron for Astronomers Without Borders. Uh, if you haven't, if you're not aware of Astronomers Without Borders, you might want to look at their webpage. Very, a very wonderful organization. Very, very nice organization. So that's. Uh, that's what we're going to look at today. This is the way the 130 millimeter uh, collapsible telescope is stored in the box. Now there's two arms here and these two arms we're going to bring da, 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 da. Oh. the first thing we have to do is to move this up it's on a dovetail kind of a mount here. We have to move this up a little bit. Lock it down. And it's already trying to slide. Lock those down for a moment so we can loosen up this. So we can turn it like that. Maybe tighten it down. Now I've got these two things right here to loosen. That brings the secondary cage. This, that's the secondary mirror. This is the secondary cage up here. It's the focuser right here. That brings all of that out. And of course you may want to rebalance it move it here. It's on this dovetail thing. You don't want to loosen that up too much or it'll fall out. Just loosen it a little bit till it balances. Maybe even make it a little back heavy because you're going to put an eyepiece in it and a finder on it. So that's how it looks. Astronomers Without Borders, One People, One Sky. Well, one of the key things, the question about this telescope, as far as I'm concerned, and the reason I bought it, to be honest with you, was to find out if this would hold collimation, uh, or if you would need to retweak everything every time you opened it up. Let me take a quick look. Well, just at a glance, I can tell you that it's not bad. It's not too far off. It comes with this collimating eyepiece. I've collimated telescopes hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. So I've got a lot of experience with doing this. This collimating eyepiece helps you to center it. What you're doing is you're centering the secondary and uh, there's a dot on the primary, so you're centering all that stuff and lining it all up together. Now, I'm experienced. I know what I'm doing. Let's see how long it takes me to do this. I can promise you, it won't be too very long. This thing is pretty close. And I'm very experienced. So I now have it collimated. There's a pretty detailed instructions that come with the telescope and how to do that. Of course, I don't need them because I've done it a million times. So now I have a collimated telescope. Now you may ask yourself, why is this on a YouTube channel that's supposed to be about toy telescopes? Is this a toy? No, honestly, it's not. It's a borderline, very serious telescope. Um, it's the kind of thing that a very advanced kid or a newbie adult might end up with, with a telescope like this. The price range is terrific. It's around $200. It's a lot of telescope for $200. Offers a lot of performance. Um, but it's really, it's honestly, it's a bit more than a toy. Maybe it's a, and a, you know, a toy for grown-ups, perhaps. 
Okay, so there we have the nice Astronomers Without Borders One Sky Telescope. Here are the eyepieces. It comes with two pretty good eyepieces, a 25mm and a 10mm, which is just about what I would select for a telescope like this. You're not going to want to go super high power. The 25mm, you focus it by doing that. And of course, I will be trying it out to see how the optics perform. Oh, look at that. It's off balance a little bit. Hmm. What shall I do about that? Actually, it's pretty good with the IP center, isn't it? Okay, but if it was off, all I have to do is loosen this, slide it back and forth, etc. You could even take the telescope off of this completely and put it on a different mount. Uh, pretty, pretty, pretty straightforward to do that, actually. Although this mount is, this mount is terrific. It's a nice, simple Dobsonian mount. You can put the whole mount on a, a tripod if you want to. Um, it'd probably be better to operate it from the ground or from a table like this. Uh, it's a little bit more stable, it, unless you have a real beefy, sturdy tripod. You don't want to have the tripod introduce any additional shaking to the telescope. Well, let me do some evaluations. I'll get back to you and tell you how the telescope actually performs. After you unpack the telescope from its shipping container, you're going to need to mount its finder. This is a little red dot finder. It's a very good quality finder, perfect finder for this kind of a telescope. And it attaches right here. Okay, now that can pretty much live there permanently. Uh, you need to align it with the telescope first time you use it. And maybe once in a while after you, after the first time with this kind of a scope, the collapsing scope. Anyway, you align it with the telescope, and then uh, once you've done that, it should be pretty much good to go, all things being perfect. Now, let's see if you can collapse the telescope. Okay, so you can collapse the telescope. It even has a lid keep it from getting dusty. So now the telescope is in a stowed position, nice stored position. Let's uh, reopen it and see how well it holds collimation. Let's just check that. Alright, let's extend it all the way out. It's supposed to be. Lock it down like so. Now I've got my collimating eyepiece in here. Collimating eyepiece is nice to have. Look at that. The darn thing is very close to perfect. I would actually not be afraid to use it just exactly the way it is. Uh, of course, you might want to tweak it just a bit here and there. It's just a little trial and error. And after you've done this a few times, it, it becomes almost second nature. It, it's very convenient that with this telescope, you can look through the eyepiece at the same time you're reaching these uh, the knobs back there. It's difficult when you have to look through the eyepiece and go back to the end of the telescope on a bigger telescope. This is child's play by comparison. So I got the telescope out, got it all re uh, realigned, collimated, and so forth, and adjusted. Took it out and tried it. The thing performs beautifully. It's a superb little five-inch telescope. I don't believe you could do better any way, shape, or form in a 5-inch telescope. It's a, it's a great um, novice beginner's telescope, first telescope, ideal. Uh, not bad at all. The only one caveat I might have with that is 
if you're at all technologically challenged, if you're not comfortable with sliding these two things, I can't, I can't believe anybody's not, but there might be people who, oh, that freaks them out too much, or the adjustment, the collimation, it takes a little getting used to. Well, once you get used to that, it's not very difficult at all. And I would say, even a kid, I wouldn't say, uh, certainly not a little kid, maybe 10 years old, I don't know, that's an arbitrary number, but depending on how bright, precocious the kid is, the kid could learn how to collimate this telescope at about 10 years of age, uh, maybe 12 to be safe. And an adult certainly should be able to learn how to do that unless you're totally technologically challenged and freaked out and stuff. Um, it's a really nice little telescope. And for, for the money, you're just, I don't think you're gonna beat this telescope. Okay, now we're gonna compare this telescope with the Edmund Astroscan. Anytime a parent would ask me what kind of telescope they should get for a child, I would tell them to buy the Astroscan. Now, that's back in the days, back in the 80s and 90s and even 70s. And the, um, the Astroscan was pretty expensive. For a parent, it was a pretty serious investment. Around $280, $300, something like that. It was a lot of money back then. It's still a lot of money. Um, and nowadays, they don't make these anymore. But if they did, it would probably be about $500 to buy one of these. Well, the nice thing about this telescope is the way the mount works. It's so easy and intuitive. A kid can operate this telescope and twist it this way and twist it that way. The finder is a little peep scope. Very, very nice. Very user-friendly for a for a, a little, you know, kid, maybe eight years on up. Well, this telescope and scopes like this replace this. First of all, they don't make these anymore. Uh, second of all, this is a bigger telescope. It's got more aperture, which is better. Uh, it's got a little longer focal length, so it's a little bit more, more magnification. It's more capable. It's a more capable telescope. So this telescope, with all of its many attributes, and it's less expensive, far superior to this one. The uh, attributes, the mount is beautiful, smooth and buttery. Once you get it balanced, it's just perfect. You can increase the tension here if you need to, but you can just about run it with zero tension on there once you get it balanced right. So on the whole, I highly recommend this telescope for... Uh, an older kid or uh, a newbie astronomer just getting started first telescope this is a perfect scope i hope you've enjoyed having a look at the astronomers without borders 130 millimeter folding telescope thank you very much for watching